like people. Um, animals have a way of talking to you. So they do tell you things. But they can't speak like we can. So they, they tell us with their body language. So an elephant, like that elephant did there, she raised her ears as we came in. She's just letting us know she's big, she's strong, and we mustn't push her. Um, because otherwise she can hurt us. But you see, we stop as soon as she does that. And now she's relaxed again. And she's just carrying on feeding. So there's things like that. So we, we, you learn how to, to, to read the news of the bush. And, and in that, you need how to read the different animals' behavior. I hope that helps. Nice to have a, a young viewer. Sounds like there's some more elephants uh, to the east of there. We can see three where we are now. Thanks also to Sid in Chicago who had the same question as Cyprian. So we can see three elephants here, but I can hear quite a few more. Let's go. I think that's actually a young boy. And that behavior fits perfectly with um, a young male. He's just a teen. He's probably about, you know, about maybe not quite a teenager yet. But um, little boys tend to make, like to make a lot of noise and shake their heads a lot at the vehicles. Um, and the most important thing, so if we zoom out, Andrew, and we look behind him, so even though he trumpeted and made a lot of noise, there's a large female at the back, and she's the one who, make, who sort of would be calling the shots for this little, little group, so the fact that she didn't react comp at all to him trumpeting and making a noise uh, it means that we're completely safe, we're not actually doing anything, it's just a young elephant boy being a bit boisterous. Oh, I'm sorry I called you a girl. Is that why you were trumpeting at me? So I was using his white. Just look down at his feet for a second. You can see how he's using his foot and his trunk together to dig something out. I can't see exactly what it is. I'm not sure if he's off the grass or something else. Stations at Shambi and Dorf, Central Road, uh, probably about 200 meters to the, or 300 meters to the, junk, uh, to the, sorry, west of the junction with Drakensberger. Yeah, they're crashing in the, uh, in the back there. Thank you. 
There's definitely a few more elephants in the three we can see. We can hear them off to the north and to the east of us. Young Combretums by the looks of things, that last thing he had. Let's just try and move so we can get a slightly better view. Watch the thorns there on the left, Andrew. Quite a lot of fun there. I can't see exactly what he's. He looks like he's playing more than eating as we're driving up. Mm. Nice cool weather for the elephants. It means they're able to be active for longer in the day. I like little boy. Don't get naughty. Your mum will give you a give you a hiding. Make too much noise, cause too much trouble. Good morning, Marianne from Boston. Uh, Marianne would like me to talk about some of the aspects of elephants in relation to human beings. Um, so their lifespan is very similar to a human being. Uh, it can be up to about 60, 65 years old. Um, when it comes to the human aspects, I don't believe the elephants have any human aspects. Um, I know there's a lot of people who will disagree and differ with my beliefs. Um, I think what Marianne was referring to is about how they react to the death of a, of a member of the herd by picking up bones and stuff like that. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with elephants in a lot of different countries um, and they pick up all bones, whether it's a hippo bone or a kudu bone or a lion bone or an elephant bone. Uh, they do tend to spend a bit of time around the carcass of a young um, calf when it dies but then so do leopard and lion do that when their cubs die I, I think it's more with that side of stuff it's more of an instinct a mothering mothering instinct that overrides um, in that situation but when it comes to mourning the death of another elephant by touching the bones um, in my experience and what I've seen over South Africa, Tanzania, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Gabon, Kenya, Uganda, um, is I personally think they are just more curious about the bones, uh, and it could be the bones of anything. I don't think they actually go through a mourning process at all and um, mourn over the loss of, of a herd member. Um, or it, because a lot of times that, that those bones are probably not from a herd member, they could be from another elephant. And a lot of the bones they pick up are very old, so it's very unlikely, in, in my opinion. I can't 
how is Morning going to help the element in any way? That's a very, very good point there, Andrew has there. Um, Andrew says, in, in, in living out in the wild, how, and how is mourning uh, going to help the elephant in any way? Um, what we perceive as mourning, with, uh, sometimes you see with leopard and lion when they lose cubs, um, it can help actually um, jumpstart their, um, their uh, extra cycle again so they can start mating again. The little one has been hearing another elephant off the left here that's been breaking a lot of branches. Let's go have a look. And another little boy. This one's just a bit older. Um, probably in his maybe late teens, early 20s. Morning, Tina from Houston. Tina was saying she thinks she noticed a, a growth or a bump on the young uh, elephant's head. I, I personally just didn't see it. I think you might be referring it uh, to the skull shape. I didn't see a growth or a bump. Did you, Andrew? Not no. I could notice, no. So maybe just uh, the, the shape of the skull sometimes looks like it has a, a growth or a bump. They do have completely massive skulls. So this, this particular elephant is, is eating grass at the moment um, and you can see how green the grass, some of this green grass has become just after that rain yesterday. Good morning, Elizabeth from Milwaukee. Um, Elizabeth would like to know about the pre-orbital gland, which is a gland that's just behind an elephant's eyes. Um, and she'd like to know whether it's only when they're in must. Uh, no, it is also it secretes when they're under stress, pressure, so it sort of droughts. Um, and maybe if there's been hunting pressure from humans and stuff like that. It's a stress gland, they will, will secrete out of there. Um, sometimes during dry season they can secrete quite heavily out of there. But with elephant bulls, generally most of the time they, they, they only do secrete out of that when they are in must. But not all elephant bulls, just some. But it's definitely far more common to see um, female elephants secreting from their preorbital glands. And, and that could be for various different reasons. Um, quite often when they're trying to push young males like this guy out of the herd, uh, at about this age, he keeps following and chasing and making noise, which he's going to do to us right now. See, he's at that sort of teenage age where he's trying to show off and be a big deal. And that's when the, the big cows will push elephant bulls of this age out. Um, so that can be quite a stressful time for them as well. So they also might secrete from their preorbitals during that. So you can see the, where we were earlier with uh, the younger male and the females. And that is probably about 50 or 60 meters between this elephant and the others. And females will try to keep him in that distance. And that screaming that we heard that probably led us to finding these elephants was probably one of the females chasing this young male out. Hey, 
big sack. Now he's still feeding off grass. Ah, well done, Teresa on Twitter. That is completely correct. Um, the old co uh, collective noun for elephants was definitely a parade. A parade of elephants. And it always just reminds me of... Um, uh, you, you read uh, Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book and the way the elephants are described in that sort of a very much a, a parade and then also in that original Disney movie sort of the military parade of elephants and yeah great go away birds calling So elephants, quite interestingly, um, during the, the wet season, uh, on average about 80% of their diet will be grass, and only 20% will be made up of trees and bushes. But now that completely changes during the, the dry season, where it's the exact opposite. About 80% is made up from uh, trees and bushes and browsing, and um, only 20% made up from grass and grazing. He's busy eating a baby knobthorn at the moment. Now, they are incredibly sharp little hook thorns on that knobthorn, so that's how we must realize how strong and thick an elephant skin is. Good morning, Virginia. Virginia would like to know whether there's a difference in the mature, uh, maturing rates of male and female elephants. Um, not really. So they both reach sexual maturity at around the same age. The big difference is that because of competition, um, a male elephant will reach, will reach sexual maturity in his, his teens, probably 14, 15, around there. But we'll probably only get a chance to mate when he's uh, closer to 30 years old. Um, and that's the competition from the bigger elephants will not let the younger elephants mate. So where there's the, the, the females will, will reach sexual maturity at about the same time, but obviously they don't have to compete. Um, so the, they, they start breeding at a, at a younger age. What's your spotted? Great girl there, birds, but I don't think I can get No, they're quite far away. I can actually hear that the rest, the rest of the herd has moved further away. Oh. Hello, Sinead again. Um, Sinead would like to know a little bit more about the way an elephant's skull is made up, um, the honeycomb effect that it has to make it lighter, so the elephant doesn't have to carry around this very, very, I mean, not that an elephant skull isn't heavy, but it isn't as heavy as it could possibly be. Um, just give me a second, Janae. I think I have a good picture of it somewhere here. Oh, sorry, Shane. I don't actually have um, that picture in the book. I thought it was in this book, but it's not. Um, but then me. So yes, they, they have a very uh, large honeycomb effect in their in their in their skull, and uh, what that does, it does make that very large head much lighter. Uh, and being a big animal, and it has to carry around a lot of weight. Um, it 
it is a it is an evolutionary adaption to, to try and make sure that they they are able to carry the weight. And you'll notice, particularly as elephants get older and start losing condition, how low their head starts to sit, and it becomes such a great weight that they they sometimes struggle to carry it. There's the grey go away bird with making all the noise. There you go, the grey go away birds we had. Perfect. Good morning, Diana from Texas. Las Vegas, sorry. Diana from Las Vegas. Um, Diana would like to know which which sex makes the deep rumble um, when you're near them. It's both sexes and, and that's how they communicate with each other. So it's both sexes that make that noise. So let me just move and see if we can see him pushing that tree. That gives you an idea how incredibly strong an elephant is. He just took that whole tree out. So the rest of the herd has moved off into quite a thick area. Oh, sorry. It's okay, carry on. Beating my cameraman with branches this morning. So, I don't think he's not in the best position for us to view him anymore. And the rest of the herd have, have moved off. So we're probably going to do the same uh, and make our way back towards quarantine uh, to see what's happening over there. But um, always wonderful to bump into Ellie's. It was quite nice that we were able to listen to the bush. The bush was a explaining to us, we're reading the bush, we, we stopped to look at a bird, we heard that scream of an, an elephant chasing another elephant, and we moved into the area and we found the elephants. So, always nice when, when you can sort of complete the whole story from a distance rather than um, sort of just fumbling around the corner into them. Uh, let me just take a few seconds to get out of here without getting a flat tire. But uh, Rosie would like to know, do I know, whoa, there's a big hole, why Asian Ellie's squeak and African Ellie's don't. Rosie, I'm afraid I've never actually um, spent any time with Asian elephants and I could not honestly tell you. I have absolutely no idea. I don't know if there's any squeaking. Uh, so, yeah, um, Andrew's worked in Sri Lanka, he said he didn't notice any squeaks. I mean, I think there might be those noises that I've heard uh, African elephants make. They do do quite high-pitched little squeals and squeals rather than squeaks and moans. Um, but I, I, I haven't ever heard Asian elephants. Um, I think I've seen them once when I was very young. Uh, so I, I honestly can't help with that, I'm afraid, Rosie. Sorry. 